Here are the top stories of the news. INEC National Commissioners holding a closed door meeting over Adamawa polls. Court refuses to vacate order restraining the embattled national officers of the Labour Party. On the foreign scene, landslide kills at least three people in northwestern Pakistan. Good afternoon and welcome to Spring News at 12 on Western Spring Television. My name is Okwaya Muni. We begin with politics where all the national commissioners of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, are currently in a closed door meeting at the Commission's national headquarters in Abuja. This is coming barely 24 hours after the electoral umpire directed its resident electoral commissioner in Adamawa State, Udu Yunusa Ari, to stay away from all activities of electoral umpire and the election in the state. In the meantime, the candidate of All Progressives Congress, APC, for the Adamawa governorship election, Senator Aisha Binani Dahiru, has filed a motion expertly before the Federal High Court in Abuja seeking a judicial review of the administrative decision of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to, res to reserve our declaration as the winner of the polls. Senator Binani is also seeking an order of prohibition and statutory preventing INEC and its agents from taking any further steps towards the declaration of the winner of elections pending the determination of application for judicial review. In this suit, the Senator stated that after the collation of results, INEC, which is the first respondent in the suit, declared her as the winner of elections. But the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and its governor candidate, uh, Madhu Fintri, who are the second and third respondents resorted to fighting and causing a public disturbance, which led to the beating and manhandling of INEC staff. This crisis, she says, led INEC to cancel the initial declaration, which it had, it had no power to do, as also the election petition tribunal is vested with such powers. Similarly, the US state governor, Shehima Kinde, has appealed to the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to do the right thing by declaring the authentic winner of the governorship election in Adamawa State. A mild drama played out on Sunday at the Adamawa State Coalition Center in Jula when the state resident electoral commissioner, Udu Yunusa Ari, controversially declared Aisha Dairu of the All Progressives Congress, APC, as winner of the polls. A move that was not within his constitutional given authority. Governor Makinde made the appeal after he met with his Adamawa counterpart, Governor Umaru Fintiri, at the government house in Yola. Mr. Makinde said the illegal declaration of the APC candidate as winner of the election is unimaginable and a shame on the person of Ari. The governor also urged the people of Adamawa state to remain calm and assure that the current situation will be resolved amicably. And uh, uh, it's just a job, a reasonable job, and uh, uh, what their decision will be respected uh, by uh, the authority. Uh, how would you describe the purported illegal declaration of the uh, It is uh, unimaginable, and uh, it's a shame, really. Uh, that uh, somebody of that caliber uh, will not be given uh, something like that. Uh, but again, uh, we have uh, stories uh, to tell, and we, uh, uh, time has been involved, you know, uh, in the process of uh, getting people who will uh, do certain uh, things for us. Federal Capital Territory High Court has refused to vacate an interim order restraining the National Chairman of the Labour Party, Mr. Julius Abure, the National Secretary, Farouk Ibrahim, and two others from parading themselves as leaders of the party. The presiding judge, Justice Amza Mwazo, rather fixed April 20 to take all applications in respect of the case. The counsel to Mr. Abure had prayed the court to vacate the interim order and restore a semblance of sanity after a takeover of the Labour Party National Secretariat by another faction. The council said the division in the party following the interim order has worsened to the point that four groups in the Imo state chapter of the party held parallel primaries. While officials of the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, yesterday stumped the National Secretariat 
of the Liberal Party in Abuja in solidarity with the party's embattled national chairman, Julius Abure. The NLC officials were led by its president, Joe Ajairo, in the Utako district of Abuja. It came amidst the leadership crisis rocking LP after a court had restrained Mr. Abure and others from parading themselves as officials of the party. Following the development, the LP vice chairman, South Lamidia Papa, declared himself as the party's acting chairman. But Mr. Ajairo said the labor movement will resist any plot to throw the Labour Party into chaos. He explained that the NLC visited the LP headquarters to fish out those who want to usurp the party's leadership. House. We decided to visit the house this afternoon after getting some information that there are some rodents we are trying to move into our house. And we have come with some insecticide. We fumigate the house from any rodent that is illegally trying to enter our property. So that is why we are here. Incidentally, we didn't see any rodent. But we'll come around and see whether there is any. The Labour Party is a child of Saddam. It was formed when we lost almost confidence in the existing political parties. And we felt that the Labour Party would be an ideal political party you know, that would represent and our ideological persuasion. That was why the Labour Party was formed. For anybody or group of people, you think that they will... Winners have been emerging from the just-concluded supplementary elections conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The election was initially scheduled for February 25th and March 18th, but was later suspended by the electoral umpire. In this report, Toby Sanusi takes us through the aftermath of the 2023 supplementary elections in the country. In Sakoto State, Governor Aminu Tambuwal has appointed a 28-member transition committee to facilitate and manage the handing over of power to the incoming governor. This was contained in a statement by the Secretary to the State Government, Alaji Minasada Ahmad, in Sakoto yesterday. The committee is to be chaired and co-chaired by the State Deputy Governor, Alaji Munir, Dani, and the SSD respectively. The committee is also to collate and document from the ministries, departments, and agencies achievements recorded by the present administration from 2015 to 2023. The state government said the committee will prepare a comprehensive handing over note to the incoming administration to be ready by May 15. We now go back to the earlier story. Winners have been emerging from the just concluded supplementary elections conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The election was initially scheduled for February 25th and March 18th, but was later suspended by the electoral umpire. In this report, Toby Sanusi takes us through the aftermath of the 2023 supplementary elections in the country. Last Saturday, the Independent National Electoral Commission, HEINEC, conducted supplementary elections across 24 states of the Federation. The election was a rerun of governorship seats in Kebi and Andamawa states. While on the other side of the divide, 93 legislative seats were up for contest in other states. Apart from the Enugu East senatorial election, which was postponed owing to the mother of Labour Party candidate Oyibo Chuku, who was later replaced by his brother, Kelvin Chuku, the other supplementary elections were rolled over from the February 25th and March 18th polls. In many of the affected states, the election was either marred by violence or votes were cancelled as a result of various degrees of discrepancies. <laughs> In 
Entebbe State, where the governorship Tosu was between a former teacher, Nasiru Hidris, of the All Progressives Congress, APC, and the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Major General Aminu Bande, retired. The APC candidate, who was leading in the earlier cancelled election, eventually clinched the governorship seat, having garnered 409,225 votes to defeat his closest rival of the PDP, who had 360,940 votes. That Idris Nassim of APC, having satisfied the requirement of the law, is hereby declared the winner and return elected. At the state assembly level, elections were conducted in Akwaibo, Bayelsa, Eboi, Edo, Imo, Kaduna, Kano, Kebi, Ninja, Ogun, Taraba, Yobe, Jigawa, Katsina, Enugu, and Adamawa State. While senatorial supplementary elections were held in Sokoto, Kebi, and Zamfara State. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives supplementary elections were conducted in Akwaibom, Anambra, Bayelsa, Edo, Imo, Kano, Kebi, Kogi, Oyo, Rivers, Sokoto, Taraba, Zamfara, Jigawa, and Eboi State. In the aftermath of the supplementary polls, the APC clinched 60 seats at the 10th Senate, while the PDP holds on to 32 seats, while the third first party Labour Party got 8 seats. New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, and the Social Democratic Party, SDP, both with two seats each, while the Young People's Party, YPP, and the All Progressives Grand Alliance, ABGA, managed a seat each. With the result, Aminu Tambua of Sokoto State, Dave Umayi of Eboi State, and Abu Bakabelo of Niger State are the three governors who have won senatorial seats. However, at the lower chamber level where result collation was still ongoing, as at the time of filing this report, the results declared so far have seen the APC winning 169 seats, PDP with 117 seats, Labour Party holds 35 seats, NNPP with 19 seats, APGA having 5 seats, the SDP and the ADC holding 2 seats each, and YPP with a seat, while more results are still expected. So far, results of the 2023 gubernatorial polls have seen the APC winning in 16 states, PDP 9, the Labour Party winning Abia State, and the NNPP claimed its first gubernatorial seat in Kanu State. All highs are known the election results turn out in the crisis reading Adamawa State, where the power tussle in the northeastern state with over 4 million population is between the incumbent governor of the PDP, Amadou Fintiri, and the female candidate, Aishad Binani Ahmed, of the APC. Toby Sanusi, Western Spring Television News. Moving on, the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board chambers extended the closing date for the 2023 direct entry registration by one week. In a statement yesterday, JAMS spokesman Dr. Fabian Benjamin said the deregistration exercise, which commenced on March 20 and built to end on April 20, will be extended by a week, starting from April 21. He stated that the extension was partly to give all holders of Cambridge A-level certificates who were unable to register for the exercise on account of some issues associated with the verification of a certificate another opportunity to do so. The other that it will as well accommodate others who wished to register but were unable to do so within the stipulated time. To help matters, the federal government has granted provisional approval for the R21 matrix malaria vaccine developed by scientists at Oxford University. Director General of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, Mujisala Dei, made the announcement at the news briefing yesterday. Development comes days after Ghana became the first country to approve the vaccine, which is said to be 80% effective. Professor Adi said Navdak received the dossier of the R21 and subjected it to independent review by experts from Nigeria's tertiary institutions and the agency's in-house vaccine review community. The director general said a joint review was then called after the team assessed the vaccine as adequate and the in-house committee also assessed it as satisfactory. You're watching Spring News at 12 on Western Spring Television. We'll be right back after this break. Artists, 
playwright and icon of Yoruba thematic art. Duro Ladipo was born December 18, 1931 in Oshobo, southwest Nigeria. His clergyman father christened him Timothy. His other names, Duro Dola, Duro Shomo, Duro Rike, reflected his persona and the circumstances that surrounded his birth. The legendary stage actor had in several public fora identified himself as one of the greatest abikus born to die in this world. Family records reveal how he was born and died 13 times. The intertwining names he bore thus lent credence to his spiritism. Duro Ladipo was one of the best known and world acclaimed Yoruba dramatists to emerge from post colonial Africa. His notable works, Obakuso, Obawaja, and Morimi, took him beyond Africa to several parts of the world. By the time Duro Ladipo died on 11 March 1978, the Nigeria's first cultural ambassador had acquired a towering image as an artist whose works adorned the frontage of Trenchard Hall, University of Ibadan. Western Spring Television identifies Duro Ladipo as a major character in history. Welcome back on Spring News at 12. Now the news continues. The federal government has urged the strike innovation workers to resume work, saying they requested adjustment of the minimum wage will be paid soon. In a statement, spokesman for the Ministry of Aviation, Olushi Odutayo, expressed the ministry's displeasure at industrial action embarked on by the workers, saying the ministry had made efforts to address their demands. Described the strike as unnecessary, stressing that it would increase the hardship by Nigerians as well as lead to economic losses. The Nigerian Aviation Authority and CAA Director General Captain Musa Nu also said concerted efforts have been made to resolve the ongoing strike. Yesterday, aviation workers blocked access roads to various airports across the country in protest of poor working conditions and entitlements. And now talking business, the National Bureau of Statistics says Nigeria's headline inflation rate increased to 22.04% on a year-on-year -year basis in March 2023. This is according to the NBS, NBS Consumer Price Index and Inflation Report for March 2023, released in Abuja yesterday. According to the report, the figure is 0.13% points higher compared to the 21.91% recorded in February 2023. It said on a year-on-year -year basis, the headline inflation rate in March 2023 was 6.13% higher than the rate recorded in March 2022 at 15.92%. Outside Nigeria, China's economy grew by 4.5% year-on-year in the first quarter of 2023, signaling that the world's second-largest economy is firmly on the path to recovery after the end of Beijing's strict zero-COVID policies. The growth figure falls slightly short of Beijing's 5% growth target for 2023, set at the National People's Congress meeting in March, but is still ahead of market expectations. According to data from the National Bureau of Statistics, retail sales grew by 10.6% year-on-year, while value-added service output rose by 5.4%. Other official economic data released today reinforced signs of an upward trend in the economy. China's economy grew by just 3% last year, the second lowest rate since 1976 amid strict pandemic measures including border closures, mass testing and months-long lockdowns in big cities. Now, while the foreign ministers of G7 have pledged to intensify sanctions against Russia, over its war in Ukraine. The comments issued this morning marked the conclusion of a three-day meeting in the Japanese resort town of Karuizawa, the group comprising of the United States, Japan, Germany, the United Kingdom, France, Italy, and Canada, said there should be no impunity for war crimes and other atrocities. The ministers stated that they remain committed to intensifying sanctions against Russia, as well as coordinating 
and fully enforcing them. On the following scene, a huge landslide in northwestern Pakistan has killed at least three people as well as wounded several others and buried nearly two dozen vehicles. According to officials, the landslide occurred early this morning near Tokam, a key border crossing between Pakistan and Afghanistan in the Kaba Pakitukua province. Local police officer Salim Kalachi told newsmen that three people have died in the incident so far. It is close that the evacuation process would take some time to complete, adding that there are around 20 to 25 vehicles buried under the landslide. Bilal Faizi, spokesman for the Rescue 1122 service in the province, said the landslide took place before dawn after rain and thunderstorm were reported in the area. In Africa, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says a U.S. diplomatic convoy came under fire in Sudan yesterday, but nobody was hurt. He made this known to reporters in Japan after G7 talks, stating that the action was reckless and irresponsible, as well as unsafe. Earlier, it was reported that the EU's ambassador in Sudan, Aidan Ohara, who has been assaulted at his home in the capital, Khartoum. Sudan has been grieved for days by deadly fighting between the army and military group, the Rapid Support Forces, RSF. According to the UN around 185 people have been killed and more than 1,800 injured in three days of fighting in Sudan. The city has seen airstrikes, shelling, and every small arms fire. We have deep concerns, of course, about the overall security environment as it affects civilians, uh, as it affects diplomats, as it affects aid workers. The World Food Program had to suspend its operations. Three of its people were killed. That uh, potentially has terrible consequences for the Sudanese people who are in desperate need of the assistance provided by the World Food Program. That only underscores the imperative of getting a ceasefire and putting Sudan back on the track that it was on, which was talks and negotiations uh, toward uh, the restoration uh, of a civilian-led uh, uh, led government. To the Russia-Ukraine war, President Vladimir Putin has visited the Russian military headquarters in the eastern regions of Ukraine and discussed the war with the general in charge of airborne troops. The Kremlin today said the president then attended an army command meeting in the southern Kherson region and had reports on the situation there. The Kremlin also released a video of a visit showing Putin dressed in a heavy blue jacket, taking a helicopter to Luhansk, but did not say when any of the meetings took place. Russia's leader heard reports from commanders of airborne forces and the Dnepr Army, Army Group, as well as other senior officers on the situation in Kherson and Zaporizhia regions. To some sports stories, Manchester City have submitted a planning application for a 300 million euros expansion of the Etihad Stadium. The club wants to increase the current capacity of 53,400 to 60,000 by expanding the North Stand. Proposals include a sky bar overlooking the pitch and a stadium roof walk experience, a 3 thousand capacity fan zone, new club, shop and museum, and a 400 bed hotel have also been proposed in the application to Manchester City Council. The club say the project, which will take three years to complete, would create a best-in-class fan experience and year-round entertainment as well as leisure destination. The planning application follows a consultation with fans and the local community. Still with the Premier League, Mohamed Salah and Diogo Jota both scored twice as Liverpool claimed a first win in five Premier League games by inflicting a second successive home hammering on Leeds United. The Reds had not won since putting seven unanswered goals past Manchester United at the start of March, but after a slow start, they ruthlessly dismantled Avigash's hapless side. Goals from Cody Gapo, as well as Mohamed Salah and Diogo Jota, give Liverpool a 6-1 victory over the West Yorkshire side. Manager Jürgen Klopp, speaking after the game, said, aside from the goals, aside from the goal, a side considered after the break, they were in control of the game. 
don't know where to start. But the whole game was was brilliant. Um, Come on, tough moments where we had to. Um, I think it's especially Aronson's shot in the second half after we conceded um, an unnecessary goal, but these kind of things can happen. Um, but apart from that, we were super in control of the game. We, were, we played brilliant, calm. Counter pressing was the best for, for ages. Ages um, loved it. Favorite situation of the game is 92nd minute. We lose a ball and four players chase the, the boy, the poor boy from Leeds on the ball down, and that's absolutely fantastic. So. Um, yeah, we were stable today and um, played good stuff and scored incredible goals. Before we end the news, here's a recap of our top stories. All national commissioners of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, are currently in a closed door meeting at the Commission's national headquarters in Abuja. Court has refused to vacate an interim order restraining the national chairman of the Labour Party, Mr. Julius Abure the National Secretary Farouk Ibrahim and two others from parading themselves as leaders of the party. On the foreign scene, a huge landslide in northwestern Pakistan has killed at least three people as well as wounded several others and buried nearly two dozen vehicles. You can follow us on our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Western Spring Television. You can also watch us live on our YouTube channel at Western Spring Television. That ends Spring News at 12. I am Okwaya Muni. Thanks for watching.